Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Praise God. Multiplication is a spirit. How many of you know that? Huh? Multiplication is a what? Is a spirit. There are people in this world you give them one dollar, and they're going to make a hundred dollars out of it in days and weeks and months and years. There are people, you're going to give one dollar, it's going to become a hundred dollars. There are people, you're going to give one dollar, it's going to become ten thousand dollars. There's people, you can give one dollar, and it's going to become millions of dollars. And there are people, you'll give one dollar, and tomorrow they have nothing. Praise God. There are people you'll give a hundred dollars and tomorrow morning they have nothing. There are people you're going to give a million dollars today and tomorrow morning they're going to have nothing. There are people you're going to give 30 million, a hundred million dollars. Some of you, if money came on your accounts right now, would need to save you from yourself. <laughs> but that said, there are people, if or when they get money, something changes. It's not only money, but other aspects too. Other aspects too. If you're a business person, you must know how to multiply. Hallelujah. If you're a minister, you must know how to multiply in yourself. Praise God. If you're a worshiper, your ministry must know how to multiply. And that will translate in the favor and grace that the Lord shall crown you with the people around you to the extent that your influence will go beyond far, far places. You understand? That's what they call the spirit and grace of multiplication. Multiplication, like I said, is a spirit. You understand what I'm saying? Miracles, signs and wonders are part and lot of the spirit of multiplication but they are not the spirit of multiplication. There are people who do signs, miracles, and wonders in different aspects of life, but they still do not multiply. You hearing me? Maybe the best tailor in the world is not the richest tailor in the world. You understand what I'm saying? One time I was in Malaysia, and a man for his wife's birthday, he bought her a bag of $30,000. About Uganda, $30,000. Happy birthday, baby. Some of you are still negotiating with guys. No, I'm giving you 10, 10,000. <laughs> Take it or leave it. Mama, this is pure leather. No, this is not pure leather. You see. I said I'm giving you 10K. Okay, at least add three for my transport. No, 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 no. Then the guy goes, as he goes, oh, okay, 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 I'll give you the three. <laughs> You're negotiating. You reach home and then you check the zip. Hey, the guy has cheated me. Can you believe I bought this bag at 10,000? Then the other person who sees it is like, Mama, Mama. <laughs> Look at that bag. This thing actually down there, it's 3K. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And there's a man in this world who is buying his wife a bag of $30,000. I don't think that a bag of $30,000 is necessarily a better make and material, but it is the brand of multiplication in the person who sold it and the ability to believe that they'll receive $30,000 from it, not the assumption that they will. The assumption will leave that bag on the store, but it will not get that bag sold. You understand what I'm saying? One time I was watching a woman, uh, they were on television one of those days and she was putting on a dress and when I calculated the amount of money of the dress, I was so shocked that women buy, you, you understand? But the brand of the man speaks. You understand? The brand of the man what? Speaks. 
You're going to go on the websites, those of you who have been to Amazon and eBay, you're going to see things that are similar but of different prices. And sometimes the quality is the same. You understand what I'm saying? And a man sticks to his guns and gets his money. And another one sticks to it and makes a loss because nobody can buy that thing at the same amount. And there are people who are willing to spend expensively for certain things and there are people who are not willing to spend expensively for certain things. And why? Because in each of these men's lives, the principle of multiplication works differently. Are you following me? We can both make products and put them at a million shillings and they buy one product at a million and they don't buy another man's product at a million and yet they're the same quality. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They're the same what? Quality. But then they might sell at one side and not sell the other. Because one has the spirit of multiplication on their lives and another one does not have. It's like ministry, I'm a pastor. Sort of and somehow, when you look in this room, you're going to see that every year we've been multiplying. You get it? Ministry for Nero has to be multiplying and has been multiplying. You get it? And we're going to continue growing. You understand what I'm saying? That is multiplication. And we can speed it and we're going to speed it up. Watch it disappear. Praise God. Tell your neighbor we are going to speed it up. It's a spirit working on us. It cannot work in Fanero and not work in your finances. It cannot work in Fanero and not work in your career. It cannot work in Fanero and not work in your business. It, it will work in your marriage. It will work in every aspect. It will work in every way. Praise God. I have reports upon reports upon reports upon reports. I sometimes hear things. Some of them I wish I can testify them. Let me give you an example. A woman flew in from the UK and came looking for me, Apostle. I have to see this man. Somebody brought her to me and then she came to testify. And she had been in the UK for so long, hustling, surviving, striving, and doing all manner of things. And one of those days she was listening to those sermons. You know one of those days when you just wake up and you want to listen to a good sermon. How many of you have woken up and you just feel like you don't need counseling, you don't need a special prayer, you just need a good word. Have you been there? Now you don't need, eh? now you, okay, situations are around you, but you just need a good sermon. Then you switch in something. And right in the middle there, you're like, but why, why was I even scared? What, what was disturbing my, have you been there? So she was disturbed and seeking God pertaining her finances. Because her finances were not rhyming right, okay? And then she goes to God and this is disturbed. And then that day she wakes up and she says, why don't I go on the app? Eh? So she goes on the app. Thank God for the app. And she puts on a sermon commending yourself to the consciences of men. She says, say what? She randomly goes on the internet and types in jobs in the UK. And then she sees a job four times her grade. Not two, not three, four times. For example, if you four times her grade, the pay was way up there. But I'm talking of her grade. For example, some of us who worked before, you realize that in usual practice, best practice, usually when you're a graduate and then you are hired, you come in on clerkship level. How many of you understand that? It can be given a certain name, a different name, but it's all clerkship. You name it anything, it's what, you know, I come in, but in, some of you either enter in as volunteer internship, clerkship, you know, first level assistant, but whatever you call it, it's the same thing, that you have to come into a system and then grow up the ranks. Isn't that so? Huh? So, it's so like happened like this, that, you know, that means that that's your grade. Don't expect to earn a CEO's salary on your first employment. You see what I'm saying? That's what makes our people predictable. That's what makes Christians predictable. And I'm saying, ah, no, 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 no. If you're in this level, no. Uh, like, <laughs> ah, you know you're still young. Give it some time. Some of these things, they come over time. Patience, you start, your patience is wonderful, but patience has to be done in revelation. Hello? So she gets some that is way for grade, not just her pay. No, we're not talking about pay here. We're talking about grade. Hmm? Like what is expected in high education and work experience. 
So they advertise this big, big, big business, analytic something, something, a very big, big conglomerate, big business. And then she, she applied. Hmm? After applying, she started commending herself to the consciences of men. Now I want to show you the power of the word. Father, when I enter, the first time I see them, I'll strike them in the heart. They'll not even think or ask me what I've studied. The girl spoke words. And to tell you the difference between faith and games, eh? the day she was going for the interview, she said, God, I'm going to go in that interview. I'm the best candidate. I'm the best they will want. This is who I am. Their consciences have accepted me. I'm acceptable. I enter with an aura. I enter with a grace. I enter with an anointing. I enter with a glory. And I'm going to get out of that interview, sit in a cafe across, and wait up to 6 p.m. My appointment later must come at 6 p.m. She enters the interview. When she enters the interview room, she finds guys with 15, 20 years experience. <laughs> Those old guys, they even know everything. You understand? Eh? You tell the guys, so how long have you been doing this? 20 years. <laughs> then you, should, you think about yourself, oh my God, this Ugandan person who has never done this job. You're sitting on an interview against men who have been in it for 20 years, 25 years, 15 years of work experience. They have their resumes right there, even working somewhere with the, in the same job. They just want to switch addresses and continue doing that work. Are you hearing me? Don't be intimidated by things. Tell your neighbor, don't be intimidated by what they have. Don't be intimidated by what men know. Men, some men, Man, I don't hire Katala. Me, nothing intimidates me. I don't care whether you pray. Katala, you shout. I know my God. Hallelujah. I don't care whether you come. Have you, have you been in a, in a place and then a man comes in and they look so ready that you feel so sorry for yourself? It's like you're going for a fight, right? And then they tell you, oh, you're going to fight a Kamin. A kind of normal guy. And then you enter to fight. And then you find this guy is all macho. He's, you, you see he has done this for long. You understand? Even his footwork shows ay, 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 ay. You understand? He knows how to dance. <laughs> what did I put myself into? The rest. I love that scripture. Do you know why I receive it over and over? Because it is something God spoke over us as a ministry. He told me you will do things beyond men. Who, I mean, they, they will not explain your speed because they will, oh, 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 you'll do faster, way faster than the fastest. That's why many times I repeat that scripture because for me it's part of the vision of my life and our lives as a ministry. You're not going to get favor because you have the highest skill. You're going to get favor because there's something you accepted in your spirit. And as I continue planting these seeds in your lives, I know God is throwing you to certain places in the mighty name of Jesus. So, she does the interview. She tells them, um, honestly, I know I'm the one you need. I know. I That interview, they didn't ask her anything about her work. Nothing. The interview kept going on different places. They began conversations as if they were old friends with strangers. After that interview, she tells me she crossed in a cafe across, sat down, and started thanking God. And she says, after the interview, they told her, I think they were going to get back to her in two weeks or something. She said, they're joking. My appointment, 6 p.m. I came from home empty. I have to go full. And the woman says, as truly as the Lord is, as it was approaching 6 p.m., somebody says, sorry, we want to change this. We don't know whether you're far or near. They've told us to print your appointment. She said, no, 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 I'm not far. I'm just across. <laughs> In just a second, she's there. The woman's like, Oh, that was very fast. How did you know? How come you were near? She said, no, no, no. I was waiting for it since morning. <gasps> what? <laughs> Praise God. May those things happen to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And they are going to happen to you. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. They are going to happen to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Somebody say multiplication is mine. In every aspect of life. Every aspect of life. Every, every. You start speaking every aspect. Mention the aspects in your spirit. Wisdom multiplies. Knowledge in me multiplies. Grace on me multiplies. Favor on my life multiplies. Love multiplies. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. John 12 verses 20. The Bible speaks of Greeks. Uh, among them that come to worship at the feast. And the Bible says they come to Jesus. In Bethsaida in Galilee. And uh, they made a request. They say, we desire to see Jesus. We're not talking about physical, just your eyes seeing. We're talking about the spiritual. Can you think of this in the spiritual perspective? Praise God. So they desire to see Jesus. Do you want to see Jesus? Uh, now, let's go beyond just what the Greeks thought that they needed versus what they really needed to see. You understand what I'm saying? Like there are people who come and say, Apostle Grace, I need to see you. You see? What do they want, what do they want, what do they want to see me? You, you understand? Do they want to see me because they need a miracle? Or do they want to see me because they want to understand the God working in my life? You, you get the difference? Hmm? For example, when I say, you will see Jesus. Yeah? Some are waiting to see him physically walking. Say, hey, Apostle told me I would see him. I've seen Jesus. You know? He doesn't need to manifest uh, physically for you to see him. He can be revealed in different things. Jesus can appear to you in different ways. You understand? Jesus can speak and minister to you in different ways. Who has understood that part? So, they come and they want to see Jesus. But how they interpret seeing Jesus is not the way Jesus wants them to understand it. You want to see the Son of God because he does miracles, the Son of Man because he does miracles. But and I wish you go beyond that and understand his purpose and will for the earth. I wish you see him even as he is with the Father and the reason why he came on us. More than just them seeing him for maybe, maybe they were just fascinated. There are people who meet you and they're just, they're just fascinated. They just want to meet a woman or a man of God, and they're just, oh my God, this is, a, this is a man of God. I met, oh my God, I'm going to faint. I met some people and they say, oh my God, I'm going to faint. This is Apostle Grace, I'm going to. <laughs> and I'm thinking, maybe because of the anointing, eh, they just end there, but there is more. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? There is more. Some of you, the people you dream to see, it's like people who are fascinated, like, Sometimes it, it kills me so much when, when I find Christians. I'm, and I'm sorry I'm going to say this. If I offend you, you'll forgive me because you understand my heart. I met the president. Yeah, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord. My fascination is meeting a man who can align my destiny. If you put the president and put a man of God, me I'll choose <laughs> a man of God. That's the truth because, do you understand what I'm saying? Eh? You get where I'm coming from. Man, I want God. I, I just want God. You get my point? Eh? Even if you got the most powerful man in the world, political, and put him here, and then you got a man of God for me here, and you told me, Apostle Grace Chooser, I will not waste your time. You'll have made it easier for me. You get my point. We are not fascinated by the things outside the world. Those things of the world, they are temporal. You get my point, eh? Yes, it's wonderful if you're meeting him for purpose, but it, please don't make it designed for you to think that you have been exalted above measure. No, 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 no. Praise God. You understand what I'm saying? There is more in God. Somebody say there is more in God. Now, the Greeks come and they want to see God, Jesus, but I don't think that they understand what they must see with him. They have an idea of what they want to see, but I don't think that they understand what they must see. You, you get the difference? Between what you think you need versus what God knows you need to see. Huh? And the Bible says, and Philip came and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip together went to Jesus. And Jesus answered them, the time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. 
Imagine somebody says, we have come to see Jesus. Huh? And Jesus says, the time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. The Greeks want to see you. The time has come for me to be glorified. You understand? If, if Jesus lived in some days, people would be like, mm, let's check the guy. Imagine you find the Son of God. He says, Jesus, the Greeks seek to see you. The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Doesn't it look strange-ish? But he's trying to give a point that my glorification is here. They're coming to see me without even a certain level of glorification. You understand? Eh? I have not been glorified to what they should really see, but they've come to see me even with this kind of glory. Yet there's a higher one coming. The time has come for me to be glorified higher than what men are coming to seek. Who has understood that? The time has come for men to come and seek you. You understand it? Eh? The time has come for you to be glorified higher than what men come looking for. Who has understood it? I say the time has come for men to come seeking you for a glory higher than what they think they're seeking you for. In other words, like Sheba was told about Solomon. You remember the story? Sheba was told of a very wise man and you know, Sometimes I mention statements and I say, this is part of the ancient things. There are things probably I have a list of that I think are ancient things. It's ancient wisdom. You understand it? That when kings and princes and queens of those years, back in olden time, hear that there is a wise man, they'll pay every price to get to them. That's how expensive wisdom is. Come on, slap somebody and tell him I got it. That's how expensive wisdom is. Like I was sharing about the stars, eh? how they follow Jesus Christ, and then they have to bless him. These magi were not believers in God, but it's ancient wisdom. You get it? It belongs in the class of ancient oil. When you understand and embrace it, there's something that will hit your life, and you'll start to look and sound way older than your years in your body. That's what I'm trying to say. You get out of a certain level of immaturity. You, you understand what I'm saying? How many of you know that there's a humility that comes when a man embraces wisdom? The meekness of the wise. There's a humility that embraces wise men. When you're not wise, you have a pride on your life. You understand? There are people who speak to other people a certain way, even to me. And I'm like, whoa. And I can see where they are going. You get my point? I can see their future. Some of you, the way you talk to other people shows that you lack wisdom, basic wisdom. And you're going to dim your star for nothing. Some people don't understand that the humility on our lives is because of the wisdom we carry. We were not born with it. No, no, no. It is something that you learn as a spirit of wisdom. It is wisdom. It is wisdom. It is wisdom to be humble. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Huh? The Bible says, let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Somebody say meekness of wisdom. Meekness. Say meekness of wisdom. Meekness. Yes, wisdom has meekness. Wisdom has a certain humility. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody might insult you, but how you answer them shows that you're a wise person or not. Like I said, some of us have pastored people who have even abused us. And some of you might find it so hard, but some people have insulted us and spoken to us disrespectfully. You understand what I'm saying? Some people, they don't even have the wisdom to be sorry. Some of you... Everything that failed in your families, we are paying the price for it. What they didn't teach you, we are paying the price for it. You understand what I'm saying? So, some of you, when you were raised up a certain way, eh, there are things that you must learn. And you see, for example, there are people who didn't have opportunity to have parents. It's not your fault. It's not your what? Your fault. But God has still prepared people to help you, like me. Hello? We are teaching you to be godly women. We are teaching you not to be strange women. Great price. Somebody shout hallelujah. And 
Besides that, God will also bring other people on your way. Don't think that because you don't have parents, God won't make a way. No, no, no. He's your father. Praise God. He has you. Don't think that because you didn't have parents, you should grow funny. No. God still has a way to teach you. So don't feel bad about it. You understand what I'm saying? So the meekness of wisdom. When you carry a certain wisdom, you start carrying a certain what? Meekness. When wisdom starts to come upon your life, you learn how to talk to people a certain way. Some of us have humbled ourselves with people who don't even deserve our humility. You understand what I'm saying? And at that point, it looks stupid and foolish, but they don't understand that there's a way, way deeper wisdom. Those things belong in the ancient class. They are in the old things. Those are what make us men of God. You understand what I'm saying? Learn to respond to the anointing a certain way. Just learn to respond to the anointing a certain way. You might know the same with that anointing, but you're not at the level with that anointing. Learn how to respond to the anointing. You get my point? Just learn how to respond to the anointing. We're not telling you lick our feet and wash our dogs. No, I'm only saying learn how to respond to the anointing. Sometimes the anointing might not be the teaching. The anointing might be the anointing on a man who has more money than you. If somebody is richer than you, come on, respect them a certain way. You get my point? If somebody has achieved something you've not yet achieved, have respect for that place. Have it, just have it. You understand what I'm saying? For example, age. If somebody is older than you by age, eh? you watch how I deal with people who are older than me, even if they're submitted to me. Watch how I deal with them, even if they are submitted to me. Watch how I relate with people who are older than me, even if they are submitted to me. You understand what I'm saying? Even if I know I'm their father, but they are older than me, I have a way I treat them. But some of you don't even respect people older than you. And this is in the Xennials. Our millennials are the ones who were born in the 70s, 80s, 50s. For us, we don't have that problem. We were overbeaten. <laughs> Hello, do I have a witness? 73, 75, 1979, 80, they, our parents used to clobber. You understand? Anything wrong, the she has a super psych up. You understand? So for us, we don't have that problem. But there are these who 92, 96, <laughs> 1994, 1990. But if, if you're a witness, put up your hands. Ah, 92, you see what we are saying. We saw what, what have you seen? But you were born in grace, you understand? When Uganda had just been, what, what do you know? Some of us, our mothers were, we, they were running with us on the back. Pew, pew. We, we know the sound of woe. What have you seen? You look at their generation. Even when they see a gun, they think it's a toy. But some of us who existed with days, ay, 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 ay. you hear, Pua! you're like, what, 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 what is happening? You're, you're awakening. <laughs> Praise God. That generation needs help. 1990, you need help. 1992, 94, 8 and 9, you need help. You need serious help. You need serious help. And if you don't learn these things here, nobody's going to teach those things to you. And if we don't rebuke you now, the world will hit you. That's why they don't have jobs. That's why they can't keep jobs. That's why many of those kids, they can't work. Many of you, you look at the 1990s, eh? they don't want to work. For them, they just want to wake up eh? and something just happens. They just want a miracle to drop. Bwah. You understand what I'm saying? They don't know the way of life. They don't know the way of life. Television has raised you, many of you. And television is just two hours of your life. You understand what I'm saying? So, help us. Praise God. Help. So, I'm saying, 
it's part of the ancient things that when a man had wisdom, you looked for them. You get it? Love. Always love to sit around men who are wise. Always. You're going to realize that when you sit around a wise man, you will always learn something. Always. As a must. You can't be around a wise man and you don't learn something. Even in their jokes, you'll pick something. That's, that's what wisdom is. You understand what I'm saying? Pay the price to get to wisdom. Always pay the price to get wisdom. You're going to see just how far this star will go. Pay the price to get to wisdom. Don't ever hold back when you're paying a price on wisdom. There are things I don't compromise over. There are things I can pay money, any amount of money for, if they add wisdom to me. Do you know why Japan is one of the most growing economies in the world and I think one has some of the highest and the best technology in the world? I mean, has somebody seen Japanese culture? How they respond to their teachers? After every class, they're supposed to bow to the men who teach them. Thank you for what you've put in me. You get my point? Eh? Some people think it's obvious to learn. No, 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 no. Wherever you are, it's your workplace. So if a man adds value to you, honor that anointing. Honor it. Because it goes beyond what you're learning. It goes into what is being planted. And when you honor, you make your heart ready to receive. That's you preparing your ground. Otherwise, you can hear and it falls by the roadside. The fowls of the air come and eat it. I've taught that in a very old sermon called The Facets of Hearing. Why certain people receive the word and it works in their lives. Why some of you are sitting under the same word but none is changing. And then there are people who are sitting in the same word and having results under your nose. It's how you receive. It's the way you receive. It's what is inside you. It's how you respond to the word of God. The word of God works for a man who knows how to respond to it. You understand what I'm saying? And part of preparing your heart, this ground, to receive seed is how you honor wisdom. So Sheba comes to Solomon. She hears there is a wise man. What does she do? She got gifts. Eh? You remember? Got many things and came and gave Solomon. And the Bible says she sat and listened to him. You remember? And the Bible says when she had, now this is beautiful, when she had the anointing, looked at how the servants were arrayed, looked at how the kingdom and palace was built, she looked at how the servants were raised, she looked at how the ministers of Solomon were, then she said, you're a wise man. Wisdom is not in what we preach, no. You understand? Look at my pastors, they look. Hmm, I'm proud to pastor. You understand? So, she said, half was told me. You know why half was told? Because one half was the wisdom he speaks, the other half was the manifestation of what she saw. Excellence is a spirit. I think she came and saw everything and she's like, huh, there's something with these guys. There's something. Half was told. Praise the Lord. And she says, your wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame which I've had. You see what I'm saying? It's the same thing that people hear about you, but when they meet you personally, they'll be shocked that they only had a part of the full lot you are. And that is going to happen to you. Somebody say that I receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Let men hear great things about you and let them come to meet you and let them discover you were way, 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 way bigger than they assumed. It's beautiful to be way bigger than men assume. Somebody shout hallelujah. And you're about to shock them. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now the Bible says... Um, Verily, verily, when Jesus repeats a word twice, he's trying to communicate something. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. He says, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. That is multiplication. You understand what I'm saying? Before a seed dies, it abideth alone. I'll give you an example. Before Jesus died, he was doing miracles. He was doing signs. He was doing wonders. How many of you know that? But Jesus doing miracles, signs, and wonders does not mean 
that that was proof that he was a dead man. Hello? Hello? In fact, on the Christ's life, on Jesus Christ's life, fruit becomes much when he dies, right? You understand? Because he multiplies himself in all of us. Everybody here represents Jesus. But that happened because Jesus died. You understand what I'm saying? Without that death, he was the only Christ on the earth. He could only do that much with the 12 disciples and the 5,000 he fed. But when he died, the church of Jesus Christ spread across the face of the earth. A man can have 5,000 members alone. But when that man dies, he multiplies himself in everybody. And he says, the least among you shall have a thousand and the greatest one among you a nation. Now, let me tell you a mystery here. Do you know why I always tell you every year to give God 10 people? Because I counted that if some of you in 10 years, at least in 10 years, times 10, eh, you'll have at least raised a thousand. Scripture would come true. Now, have you understood? Have you understood? If each one of you raised 10 people, he said the least, meaning that bare minimum, everybody in this room, in 10 years, you must see fruit of 1,000 people. Shake your neighbor and tell them they're talking about you. Are you hearing me? In 10 years, everybody in this room, I don't care how much English, how much career, how many children, I put some busy, I don't care. He said the least, the least, a little one among you shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation. And he said, that's my business. I, the Lord, will hasten it. In other words, I will give you the grace. Receive the instruction of the altar and take it seriously. This is where actually blessing comes. This is the instruction of the altar. Apostle, how can I serve? I've told you how. This is you reproducing yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Count how long it's going to take you to raise that a thousand, to consider that now you're a little one in the ministry. You get my point? And the people by 10 years, they'll be way more than a thousand because he has promised that a small one shall have a strong nation. So what does the great one have? The world. Thank you. The world. So do you understand that we cannot just end in Uganda? Slap somebody and tell them they're talking about me. No. We're going to hit Africa. We're going to hit America. We're going to hit the islands. We're going to go across the whole world. We're going to go in the valleys. We're going to go in the streets. We're going to go in the water on water above it. You understand? Tell your neighbor, we've not yet started. Tell your neighbor, we are going to write history. We are going to write history. We are going to write history. Tell your neighbor, we are going to write history. People will be looking at like, what is that? You simply tell them, no, that's us. That's just us. That's just us. I'm just your leader in this. You understand? I'm just leading you in this, but you are all partakers. You're all partakers. You're all partakers, you're all partakers, you're all partakers. Somebody say, I receive it. I want you to lambano, catalambano it, receive it in your spirit. Take it and say, that's me. Praise God. How many of you were referred here? Somebody brought you to this ministry. Put up your hands. Straight, up straight. So you're someone's fruit. How many of you came on your own without being referred? You see? There are few. So that means you are someone's what? Fruit. You are so Woo! Somebody's enjoying labors because of you. Because when they look to God, they know they've done something. What about you? 
Praise God. For me, every year, I tell God, I must win these souls. I must get these people. I must. For me, it's part of me. Now, me, come on, I'm beyond little. I'm beyond those, you know, small ones. I'm past Uganda now. That's the truth. Go anywhere across Uganda and talk Apostle Grace. They know him. Praise God. They go anywhere across the Go, go, go. You move, you'll hear. No, I'm not boasting. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> You understand? We have the biggest fellowship in the country. It's not a statement of faith. It's not a statement of faith. Move around Kampala, you'll understand what I mean. It's not a statement of faith. You all know that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the same to you individually. Tell God, I must, I must, I must. I must produce fruit. Write your 10. How will I get them apostle? The Lord will hasten. For me, I always tell myself, the Lord will hasten. Now how? Me, my part is simple. Throw the seed. Let it germinate. If he refuses, I go to another one. If it, I, you know, because I, you sh I don't carry the mindset that I can fail. When I look at it in my head, it's not there. Praise God. Let's make it happen. Tell your neighbor, let's make it happen. So do you understand why we give you such instructions now? We give you such instructions. I have proved myself. I'm approved of God. I don't need any more to, you, you understand? Eh? Why? Because the Bible is very clear. Eh? Of my apostleship are you in Christ. Some of you, you're the seal of my apostleship. If somebody out there doubts the apostolic anointing on my life, you've tested it long enough to know that this is a man of God. I don't need to explain to anybody anymore that I'm a man of God. If it's proving myself, I've proved myself. Jesus needed 12 and he shook the whole world. I have more than 12. I have more than what? 12. But me, I feel I've not yet begun. That's why I chose to be here longer. You understand? Because I feel I've not what? So I made the choice. I said, no, let me be around. I also want to see some of you have children and grandchildren. You understand? I want to see how you look like at 80. That's why I'm around. Some of you, I want to see your faces. Because do you know many times when I'm praying for your health, I, I imagine your faces, all of you. Me, that's how I see you. When I start looking at you, I imagine you when you're 80. You understand? Gray hair, but hard. Hard bones. We'll be still playing basketball at 65, 70, things like that. I, I imagine I'm playing you in the brain. You understand? In my spirit, I look at you and I know that you're going to live long. Somebody shout hallelujah. You're going to live long. And that's now the man of God praying for you. By projecting a vision of how you will look when you're old. I'm throwing you there. I'm throwing you there. You understand what I'm saying? I'm throwing you there. I'm throwing you there. Recently, one of our own survived death. She fell in a pool and got a cardiac arrest and they get out of the pool and she was literally dead. She wasn't breathing, no life, no nothing. She gave me a testimony. She says, she said, as she was like there dead, one of our own is saying, I release the life of God in you. You understand? Nothing. She's literally dead, no pulse, no nothing, no breathing, no nothing. And she had spent quite a long time under the water. So they put her there. There was no water in the lungs. She was like out, cardiac arrest. Yeah? Now, to know how serious it was, huh? the guy around her tries to do everything he could and failed. He couldn't get her to even breathe. And then she says, while in there, something started pulling her. And while it was pulling her, I started preaching to her. Woo! You have the life which is of God in you. She said, she started seeing me. She said, everything I've preached over the years, she started seeing me speaking it into her life. And she jacked back to life immediately. They took her to hospital. They took her to hospital. The doctors don't have a scientific reason why she's alive. These words we tell you, eh? These things we are telling you every Sunday. They are life to them that find them and medicine upon their bones. You will not die under this message. You will not die under these words. You will not die under this. You will not die. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
tell your neighbor I plan to be here longer. If I'm annoying my enemies, they're in trouble. They're going to die quicker than I. Tell them, tell them, don't fear. These words are working in you. You will live. You will multiply. You'll increase in every way. You cannot be poor. So let the ruins come to life In the beauty of your name Rising up from the ocean God forever And my soul will find refuge In the shadow of your wings I will love you forever Let the ruins come to life in the beauty of. Take a minute and just speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues means you're receiving this. The soul will find refuge in the shadow of the wind. is opening up on your life to imagine and create the world you want to see. I want you to start creating with your imagination. I will love you forever. Forever Let the ruins come to life in the beauty of your name. You're multiplying. Anointing. Oh, my soul will find refuge. Shallow view. I will love you forever. Forever I'll stay. Your wings come to life. The of your name. Rising up from the ocean. Somebody needs to create more. Create. 
a fire, there's a power that creates. Receive it. There's a fire that creates. There's a power that creates. There's a power that creates. Shadow of your wings. God calls you to change the world.
The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Finero, make manifest.